Hello, Matt here from chemistrystudent.com. In this video, we're going to look at half cells and electrochemical cells. We're going to talk about what half cells and electrochemical cells actually are, what we mean by an electrode potential, and why and how electrochemical cells can have a potential difference. Standard electrode potentials, salt bridges, and cell notation have been covered in separate videos. Check the links in the description below. Before we talk in detail about electrochemical cells, there are a couple of essential ideas you need to be comfortable with. Oxidation refers to the loss of electrons by a species and reduction, the gain of electrons. In solid metals, atoms are tightly packed together in a regular lattice, with the atoms existing as positively charged ions surrounded by a sea of delocalized electrons. Quick recap done, let's go. When a solid piece of metal is placed in a solution that contains ions of the same metal, an equilibrium is established between them. We can show this equilibrium as a half equation. With the metal ions gaining electrons to be reduced into the solid metal, and at the same time atoms of the solid metal being oxidized into metal ions in the solution. The position of this equilibrium is based on how reactive the metal is. The more reactive the metal, the more the position of equilibrium favours the oxidation direction. Now, when atoms in the solid metal get oxidized and become ions, the ions enter the solution. The electrons from the original atom remain in the solid metal, remember as part of the delocalized electron system. This now means that if a positively charged ion breaks away from the solid metal, the solid metal ends up having a surplus of electrons compared to the remaining atoms in its structure. The solution also ends up being positively charged, as the number of positively charged ions in it has increased. As a result, the solid metal ends up being negatively charged compared to the solution, and is said to have a negative electrical potential. And the solution ends up positively charged compared to the metal and has a positive electrical potential. This whole setup is referred to as a half cell and the solid metal placed in the solution is called an electrode and the solution itself is called an electrolyte. Because the two potentials of the electrode and electrolyte are different, there is a potential difference between them. The potential difference between them can't actually be measured directly, as you instantly affect the potentials of the electrode and electrolyte if you tried to measure them. What we can do instead, however, is see how the electrical potentials of electrodes from different half cells compare to each other and measure the potential difference between them instead. The more reactive the metal in a half cell, the more the position of equilibrium lies to favour the oxidation, meaning the solid metal electrode ends up with more surplus negatively charged electrons and a greater negative potential. For a less reactive metal, the position of equilibrium would lie less in the direction of oxidation, meaning the solid electrode doesn't end up with such a large surplus of electrons, and therefore its electrical potential isn't as negative as for a more reactive metal. If you were to take the two electrodes of two different half cells then, they will have a different electrical potential, meaning there would be a potential difference between them. One of the electrodes would have a greater surplus of electrons and therefore be more negative than the other one. <laughs> Without getting too physics-y here, we can measure potential difference using something called a voltmeter, which records the potential difference in a unit called the volt. For this level of study, all you really need to worry about is the bigger the number and voltage, the bigger the potential difference. The smaller the number and voltage, the smaller the potential difference. As the potential of the electrode in each half cell is determined by the metal's reactivity, so how easily its atoms oxidise, 
The greater the difference in reactivity of the two metals in the two half cells, the greater the potential difference and voltage between their electrodes. A bit confusing, I know. Let's have a look at an example. If we take a half cell made up of zinc metal as the electrode and a solution of zinc ions in water as the electrolyte, made using zinc sulfate, we know as the zinc atoms in the electrode get oxidized into ions, surplus electrons build up in the solid zinc electrode. The same thing is true for a half cell made up of a copper metal electrode and an electrolyte of copper 2 ions, from say copper 2 sulfate. Crucially, as zinc is a more reactive metal than copper and its atoms oxidize more easily, a greater proportion of zinc atoms from the electrode will be oxidized into zinc ions compared to copper atoms from the copper electrode in the copper half cell. This means we would expect a greater surplus of electrons on the zinc electrode, meaning a more negative potential, compared to the copper electrode. This would give a potential difference between them, with the zinc electrode being the more negative one and the copper electrode being the more positive one. And voila, if we connect the two electrodes together with a voltmeter, we do indeed see a voltage. This is outlined and covered in more detail in a video about standard electrode potentials. Check the links in the description below. When two half cells are connected together, an electrochemical cell is formed. If a wire is connected from one electrode to the other, electrons will flow from the electrode with the more negative potential, with a greater surplus of electrons, to the electrode with the more positive potential, with a smaller surplus of electrons. This flowing of electrons means an electrical current is produced, electricity. This is how simple cells in batteries, such as in your mobile phone and laptop, actually work. When the electrons reach the more positive electrode, the position of equilibrium for that half cell moves to the right. More reduction happens than oxidation and, overall, more ions in the solution, the electrolyte, get reduced to solid atoms on the surface of the electrode than solid atoms get oxidized into ions. For the other half cell, as electrons flow away or leave the negative electrode, the position of equilibrium shifts to the left and more oxidation of atoms occurs compared to reduction of ions. This means more ions enter the solution. Basically then, as electrons reach the more positive electrode, they get used up by reducing ions in the electrolyte of that half cell, and to replace the electrons leaving the negative electrode, atoms of that electrode get oxidized and become ions in the electrolyte of that half cell. For example, going back to the zinc and copper half cells from earlier, if we were to connect them together, electrons would flow from the zinc metal electrode to the copper metal electrode. The extra electrons pushed into the copper electrode would be used to reduce copper ions in the electrolyte of that half cell to copper atoms. And to replace the electrons lost by the zinc electrode, atoms of that electrode would be oxidized and enter the electrolyte as ions. To enable the electrons to keep flowing from one half cell to the other, the circuit must be complete. And to do this, something called a salt bridge is used. A salt bridge contains aqueous ions of a salt that can move freely between half cells, enabling charge to flow. How a salt bridge actually works and enables charge to keep flowing has been outlined in a separate video. Check the links in the description below. However, at this level, all you usually need to be able to do is describe what a salt bridge is rather than worry about how it works. The half cell where reduction takes place is called the cathode and the half cell where oxidation takes place is called the anode. Although oxidation and reduction is happening at the same time in an electrochemical cell, the reactants being oxidized and reduced never actually come into direct contact. 
This means we tend to describe the processes occurring using half equations for each half cell and use simple notation to show the overall electrochemical cell. We write the species that react and form in each half cell, each separated by a single bar. The anode is placed on the left and the cathode on the right, with a double bar used to represent the salt bridge. The products of oxidation are in the middle, next to the salt bridge, and the products of reduction furthest away. For example, the zinc and copper electrochemical cell shown earlier would be represented as zinc solid straight line, zinc 2 plus aqueous double straight line, Cu2 plus aqueous straight line, Cu solid. This is because the anode where oxidation happens is the zinc half cell, meaning it goes to the left of the salt bridge. And the copper half cell is the cathode where reduction happens, meaning that half cell must go to the right of the salt bridge. The products of oxidation, the most oxidized species, always go closest to the salt bridge. This would be Zn2 plus in the zinc half cell and Cu2 plus in the copper half cell. The electrode material must always be shown. For most half cells, this is just the solid metal in the half equation. However, when there is no solid species in a half cell reaction, like for aqueous Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus ions, a platinum electrode must be used. This would be shown in the notation as being furthest away from the salt bridge, again separated from the other species in the half cell using a straight line. These more complicated examples have been outlined at chemistrystudent.com. Check the links in the description below. Now, things can get a bit confusing here when students try to remember what the cathode and anode are. Here, the cathode is the half cell with the more positive electrode potential and the anode is the half cell with the more negative electrode potential. However, it is always best to remember the cathode as where reduction happens and the anode as where oxidation happens. As for in electrolysis, the cathode is actually the negatively charged electrode and the anode the positively charged electrode. Still, however, it is reduction that is occurring at the cathode and oxidation at the anode. Meaning, if you always remember it as reduction at cathode and oxidation at anode, you will always be correct, regardless of the type of cell or process in electrochemistry you are talking about. So, to summarise, a half cell is made up of an electrolyte and a solid electrode. The electrode will have an electrical potential that is determined by the position of equilibrium between species in the half cell. Electrodes from half cells made of different metals and ions have different electrical potentials, as the position of equilibrium in each will be different. Two half cells connected together make an electrochemical cell. And the electrodes from two different half cells connected will have a difference in electrical potential, or potential difference. If the electrodes from two different half cells are connected together by a wire and the circuit completed, then electrons will flow from the electrode with the more negative potential to the electrode with the more positive potential. When the electrons reach the more positive electrode, it forces the position of equilibrium for that half cell to move to the right. More reduction happens than oxidation, and ions in the solution, or electrolyte, get reduced to solid atoms on the surface of the metal. As the electrons leave the more negative electrode, it forces the position of equilibrium for that half cell to move to the left more oxidation happens than reduction, and atoms at the surface of the metal get oxidized to ions that enter into the solution. We can write half equations for what is taking place in each half cell, and simple notation is used to show the overall electrochemical cell. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out other relevant videos in the links given in the description below, and visit chemistrystudent.com for free notes and revision materials.